Uh, greetings and welcome to our 27th episode of Oblivion Household Hunters, where we take a look at uh, three different house farms each week as we try and find your dream home in Cyrodiil. As always, I'm your host, Doc Elf Guy, and uh, today we have another three random themed house farms for your viewing pleasure. Though most of these are actually centered around or in the vicinity of Lake Rumere and also the Imperial City. That uh, wasn't planned though, that's uh, just more or less accidental happenstance. And anyway, you'll find down the links for the mod shown here down in the video description below. So let's go ahead and get sorted with our popular house mod of the week, which uh, this week is Water Lily Cottage by Emma. And uh, now this mod adds a small cottage along the uh, road to Chaden Hall, really not too far away from the Imperial City and uh, Lake Rumere. And it's your, you know, sort of traditional Imperial countryside uh, cottage with a small stables nearby. And while there's not a huge amount of landscaping out front here, this is just a really beautiful area of fields of flowers and, you know, ivy growing up along the exterior of the house here. It's really all quite beautiful. Of course, the uh, main draw of this house is actually out towards the back here, because it sits right on a pond full of, you know, water lilies, making again for a rather scenic and beautiful location to relax in, with a small deck including a couple of chairs for you to, you know, just sit down and admire the uh, view with, as well as, you know, steps that go right into the pond in case you want to take a dip or, you know, go for a swim. And unlike most of Emma's mods, the location here is just, you know, perfectly scenic, and on a clear day you can even see the white gold tower in the distance, but uh, taking a look at the map here, you can see this home is kind of in between Shaden Hall and the Imperial City. Though, truth be told, it's probably closer to the Imperial City overall, so long as you don't mind uh, swimming there, of course. And uh, this house naturally comes with a map marker. But uh, before you move in, though, you'll need to uh, buy the deed from the uh, General Goods Shop in Shaden Hall, and I'll sell you back a good uh, 3,000 gold or so, which is, you know, fairly cheap for a fully finished house, really. And uh, inside, you'll find a small but cozy and beautifully finished home for you to call your own. Uh, complete with a small lounge and study area with a roaring fireplace and a couple of beds, uh, one for yourself and a companion if you have one. And there's also a kitchen with a couple of counters for food preparation and a dining area. And uh, while this cottage is a bit on the uh, cramped side, it just feels, you know, wonderfully atmospheric with a lot of that uh, rustic charm from uh, living out in the country. And while it's already, you know, fairly detailed with decorations, there's uh, still some space for you to, you know, add in your own touch if you so desire. And of course, this property does come with a basement, where you'll find a workshop and uh, plenty of storage to, you know, throw your items into. And it should be mentioned that uh, Water Lily Cottage comes with support for both cobble and Oblivion Crafting, with a number of Oblivion Crafting features already built in, like uh, cooking, smelting, and weaving. And overall, this is just a really charming, scenic, and rustic little home for you to, you know, call your own. We have uh, quite a few features with cobble support, Oblivion Crafting, a companion bed, lots of storage, and of course, a map marker for your convenience. Uh, this is a perfect term for those who want something small, but, you know, in a beautiful location. Uh, moving on, our uh, new house of the week this week is uh, Noble D's Heartland Tovel by Noble D. And this adds a cozy and quaint little cottage just up the hillways from uh, Lake Rumere, just to the uh, northeast of the Imperial City. It's a rather unassuming and small house with a walled in front garden. And apparently this house has been abandoned for quite some time since there's a uh, tree that has evidently fallen on the roof a bit. But uh, either way, this is a rather scenic location with Ivy climbing up the uh, exterior walls here, and even a few flowers here and there. And uh, this home has some amazing views of the Imperial City with the uh, white gold tower there uh, clearly visible in the distance. And uh, just taking a look at the map here, as you can imagine, the uh, commute to the Imperial City is fairly short, though of course the most direct way is to swim across. And uh, naturally, this uh, house does come up a map marker for convenience. And uh, anyway, heading inside, you'll find a warm and rather atmospheric abode that's a bit on the, uh, you know, swell side, with a pet rat to keep you company. And overall, this home looks, at least on the surface, to be, you know, sort of uh, mildly impoverished, with a small dining area, a uh, lounge in front of the fireplace, a single bed for you to sleep in, of course, and also some storage and counters to display items on. But uh, the real meat of this home is actually in a hidden cave, making this an ideal home for, you know, more thief-like characters who want a secluded set of chambers away from the uh, prying eyes of the law. Uh, this cavern includes a surprisingly well-finished set of chambers, including a study area with a desk, as well as a display area with a number of display cases to show off your loot in, where the uh, gods will, you know, probably never find it. And uh, really, the uh, lighting down here, combined with the uh, bats flying around, uh, makes for a rather atmospheric set of chambers. And uh, overall, this is a cozy and atmospheric cottage with some amazing views of the Imperial City, as well as some chambers ideally suited for thieves or assassins. And uh, there are a few convenience features here, such as a uh, map marker, display rooms, and, you know, hidden chambers. And if you're looking for a home that can accommodate your need to, you know, stay hidden from the law, while being just, you know, a short commute from the Imperial City, uh, you might want to consider giving this one a try. 
And to finally, for our underrated house of the week this week, we have Dark Soul Tower Voyage. And to this one adds a rather unique looking mage themed town to Wellspring Grove, one of those uh, small islands in Lake Rumere that, you know, plays a pretty important uh, part in the Mage's Gold Quest line. And uh, really, this is a quite interesting looking abode, with a mixed shade and hall and, you know, imperial style of architecture, as well as a couple of uh, oversized statues guarding the front entrance. It is rather scenic looking, and in case you are wondering, it uh, shouldn't cause any conflicts with the actual Mage's Gold quest line here. But uh, moving on, let's take a quick look at the map here. And of course, this home does come with a map marker, as well as a rather short commute back to the Imperial City. Though again, you'll need to uh, swim to actually get there. And uh, just going inside, this has a fairly typical Shaden Hall style layout, at least at first anyway. With an entry hall that includes a lounge, a dining area, a uh, small study, and a lot of Mage themed decorations in particular. And uh, going upstairs, you'll find a balcony overlooking the entrance, and also some pre-decorated bookshelves. And indeed, this first floor of the house here comes, you know, largely finished and decorated already. And uh, you'll also find a bedroom up here, with uh, several beds that can be used by companions. And of course, this uh, first floor of the house here is really only the entry set of chambers, as the house gets, uh, you know, quite a bit larger later on, as we're about to see. But uh, anyway, moving on to the uh, rest of the house here, this next room is a... Well, I'm not really sure what to call it exactly. I suppose it's some sort of a mage-like meeting room, given the uh, round table and all. Though it might also pass as a library. Or, you know, it could just be a sort of a combination of the two. And uh, regarding this, as you might expect for a sort of mage-themed house, there's uh, naturally a magic lab, including an alchemy garden and altars of enchanting and spell making, as well as a dragon statue for, you know, decoration. And uh, finally, this last set of rooms up here is your own personal set of quarters, away from the uh, more, you know, sort of uh, public areas of the house, including an outer lounge and a uh, master bedroom, naturally. And, you know, I feel like it's uh, probably worth pointing out that uh, there is some overpowered loot included with this home, uh, mostly used as decorations, but uh, that's something to keep in mind if you're, you know, bothered by that sort of thing. And uh, overall, this is a rather interesting and definitely a unique house form that provides a lavish a mage themed abode for you to find on an island in Lake Rumere. It uh, does require a bit of searching to find the key to it, which is uh, hidden nearby, but uh, otherwise it comes with a host of uh, mage friendly features, such as uh, altars of enchanting and spell making, an ingredient garden in and alchemy lab, a companion bed, and a map marker for fast travel, and say around the scenic of, you know, perhaps all the soul of house mod. And if you're looking for, you know, something different yet at the same time, you know, suited for mages, uh, you might want to uh, consider giving this one a try. And that wraps up everything for this week's episode of Oblivion Household Hunters. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.